How's it going friends? Welcome to another weapon testing video. Today we're going to be covering two different weapons so it might be a little bit lengthy because it's going to be showing two Earls and side-by-side -side damage between two of the tankiest enemies in the game I think that are not bosses. But it is also quite expensive because it is going to consume a lot of stim packs. But of course you can always um, opt out in something else if you do so choose. If you decide to use this build, I guess. Anyways, let's go into the perk cards. So for the perk cards, we have level two blocker, level two bandolier, maxed out master uh, or maxed out heavy gunner damage mods or perks, as well as a level two traveling pharmacy. For perception, we'll be using level three concentrated fire because one of the weapons we're going to be using today is going to be a crit gun. For endurance, we have chem fiend, fireproof, Radical, as well as Maxed Out Rejuvenated. For Charisma, we're going to be using Level 4 Wanderer because we're going to be doing this solo. Suppressors and Tenderizer. For Intelligence, we're going to be using First Aid, Nerd Rage, Power User, Stabilized, and Batteries Included. For Agility, we got Action Boy, Through Hiker, and Born Survivor. I would highly recommend if you do use Born Survivor, if you're using diluted or regular stim packs and you're able to carry a bunch, that's awesome. Um, but if you are struggling with stim packs, I don't recommend Born Survivor because it will consume the every living crap out of your stim packs. So be warned with this. For luck, we have Bloodied Mess, One Gun Army, Class Freak, and Starched Jeans. For our legendary perk cards, we have Level 1 Power Sprinter, um, Power Armor Reboot or Power Reboot. The other power armor um, legendary perk card would probably have been a better choice, but this is what we are using today. The next one we have electric absorption, uh, maxed out, level 2 charisma, and maxed out intelligence, strength, and agility um, again. Now let's check out the gear that we are going to be using. So, we're going to be using non-legendary power armor. Unfortunately, I didn't want to invest too much into the PA because I don't use PA often. So we are just using somewhat of a combination between T T60 and one um, Union piece. For our weapons, we're going to be using a bloody faster fire one agility ultra sight Gatling laser with double true mods and reflex and beam focuser. For the next weapon, we're going to be using the Bloodied Vats Crit Damage 25 LVC with Calibrated Receiver for the extra crit, True Charging Barrels, Reflex, and Beam Focuser as well. Now, timestamps are going to be linked below. So, in short, I'm going to show you guys the Earl runs, and then I'm going to show you side-by-side -side damage comparisons between uh, two of the tankiest enemies, I believe, that are in the game, the Marlar Queen and the Super Mutant Behemoth. So let's get right into it. Okay, so for the first Earl, we're going to be using the Bloody Faster Fire Rate Ultra Psych Gatling Laser. Now, there's a difference between the two, and surprisingly, the Ultra Psych Faster Fire Rate performed a lot better. Um, and it felt a little bit more consistent. The build was able to to sustain itself and was able to survive tanking many many hits but the low HP keeping nerd rage up um, and unfortunately though we ended up dying once but besides that we were able to just slowly burn him down it wasn't the fastest Earl but the damage was definitely there to an extent now for both instances of this run and the next one you guys are about to see I probably wouldn't take this into a solo Earl again, although this was very difficult, I don't think it would be able to do a queen by itself, because the odds of crippling the wings for the queen is a real pain in the butt, because since the queen will constantly be flying around and you're going to have even stronger ads attacking you, and more at once I believe, if you're unlucky, it would be fairly difficult to solo. But unfortunately, I made some mistakes. I forgot to bring Liquid Courage uh, on both runs. So the time could have been cut a little bit. But for this run, we were able to take Earl out with only 30 some odd seconds left. Now, for the bloodied crit less bats, 
it does work just like the Gatling gun. If you do not know what the Gatling gun um, feature is, when you hold down the trigger and you spam your ADS, you'll be able to shoot faster. And the Ultra Sight without faster fire rate does work with it. I tried it with the faster fire rate um, Ultra Sight Gatling laser and I couldn't necessarily tell a difference. And if it was, it wasn't that much. But as you can see, I'm shooting incredibly fast. It seems like I'm using faster fire rate and it doesn't seem like I'm spamming my ADS, but I am. You will see here, on occasion, I'll be using the regular fire rate and whenever I do VATS. But for this run, it was actually a lot difficult. I made a lot of mistakes. And again, the biggest one was probably not bringing Liquid Courage. Now, unfortunately, the time was running low. We were getting very, very close to him getting downed. But unfortunately, this is where it ended the run. Those last 10 seconds or 12 seconds before he screamed and feared me away, I probably could have knocked him out with no time left over. But it may have, it may have been a clear. So those were the two Earl runs. I have to admit, it's very possible to do it for the Bloody Vats crit, and another mistake that I forgot to mention is that I ended up not critting as much as I wanted. Um, it just took too much time after constantly getting staggered, so the crit, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are like, well duh, it's a heavy gun. Eh, it was worth the shot, you know? And even though the crits wasn't be able, being able to crit, I was able to get very, very close. Liquid Courage would have changed that outcome and made it a full clear. But now let's go on to the damage comparison. Now as you can see on screen, we have faster fire rate on the left and the ADS spam on the right. Unfortunately, for the Myler Queen, the ADS spam did not fare too well. The faster fire rate tore through the Myler Queen and was able to clear out the other adds before it was done. For the behemoths, both weapons fared very very well and they finished almost at the exact same time which was surprising, but yeah. Now keep in mind that during those damage testings both of them were using the exact same build still, uh, no differences, no changes, um, and I don't know why the queen ended up being a little bit more tankier for the ADS, maybe because it was moving too much and um, maybe the other one on the left, or the faster fire rate one, was a little bit more consistent. But, other than that, the damage is still there for both, and honestly, it's a fun weapon. Um, I feel like Ultra Sight Gatling lasers are just a little bit underrated, um, and I would like to actually compare these weapons to the regular laser, Gatling lasers. So, Maybe in the future we'll do a damage comparison for that as well, and also see if the regular Gatling lasers can solo Earl. But with that, if you guys have any questions, concerns, please let me know in the comments. Uh, just to be, or let you guys know, I'm not a good PA builder. Um, this was kind of thrown together. It took me, I think, seven runs to finally get this build. And it ended up working for the intended purposes, but if you guys are better at building your PAs, um, maybe you can actually clear these arrows a lot better with this weapon. But other than that guys, you have a wonderful rest of your day, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, happy hunting, good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!